Good afternoon and welcome to the wrap-up show presented by the UPMC Health Plan. Mike Pursuta along with Craig Wolfley. Day number 12 on campus and practice number 10 in the books here on Sunday afternoon. Steelers completing today's uh, non-shoulder pads practice with a couple of two-minute drills. Uh, it's our pleasure now to go down to the practice field and welcome wide receiver Calvin Austin III to the show. Calvin, thanks for joining us. Appreciate your time here. And the first question I have for you is, it looks like for a little while now you've been really starting to find it and feel it. Uh, when the shoulder pads came on, did you get faster or did everybody else get slower? <laughs> uh, I think I still – I think I got a little faster. Um, you know, that's one thing. It's kind of funny. People be like, Destin will be able to – you know, I'm a small guy, so they say when the shoulder pads come on, Destin we will tell. But it's like, you know, I'm a football player, so when the shoulder pads come on, that's when I get better too. Kelvin, how much did you anticipate this camp? There was so much expectations. I know a, as a young man, 43 years ago, I was a young man on that field in my rookie year. That's a long time ago, I got you. But 40, 43 years ago, I couldn't wait to get on the field. So for you, coming into this camp, how excited were you to participate? I was super excited. You know, I was just so blessed to be healthy and just to come to have a successful OTAs that, you know, I was kind of itching to get back to camp because, you know, going into last year, obviously I didn't expect to have an injury. So um, camp was kind of cut short. So coming to this camp, I was just, you know, prepared mentally and physically. So, you know, I was just ready to go out there and, and show what I can do and show that I was healthy. Calvin, you had talked uh, in the springtime during the OTAs about how you didn't really perceive yourself to be a rookie this time around, even though you missed your rookie season because of injury, you were emphasizing to us how you were around, you were in the meetings, you were paying attention, you were learning. Uh, what is, where, excuse me, is what you did last year showing up on the field this year, even though you didn't play last year? Um, I think in all aspects of the game, you know, it's just from like simple things so as far as like running the seam route. You know, you just, some people would think that's just simple. Okay, just run straight up the hash and stuff like that. But, you know, it's things to it. You got to read the defense, know what to do. And it was simple things like when I got to camp, you know, last year, I was trying to fix up, clean up how to run the seam route. Now I'm going to the, you know, the X, Y, Z. I'm just not starting with the the ABCs of things. So it's just I'm, I'm so much more mentally prepared coming to this camp as far as reading defenses, knowing the plays. And since I do have a, this coming into this second year, I can be moved around a lot more and can be used in a variety of ways. Kevin, what's your go-to to beat the press at the line of scrimmage? Smaller guys, a little more difficult. You got some long length cornerbacks that you got to deal with. So what's your go-to? Um, definitely, you know, my um, speed, you know, so my speed, my, my speed release is definitely my go-to. Um, it's what the defense fears. So, you know, I usually do that one to set up my, uh, my other counter releases. And then from then on, it's like I, I'm in control. So once I let that DB feel, feel my speed, then I, I'm in control <laughs> of the whole game. And from then on, I can, you know, hesitate them. But, you know, I'm still learning a whole lot about releases and stuff. You know, Deontay and Allen are constantly on me about, you know, um, changing it up and stuff like that. So, you know, I'm still growing in that area as well. So it's great to have um, vets like that and, you know, um, release specialists like that to be um, on our team to, to help me out. Mm -hmm. Calvin, uh, two-minute drill to, to wrap up practice today and the first group with Kenny Pickett at quarterback uh, was officially, I guess, stopped at the one-yard line. But uh, I saw what I thought would have been a 45-yard touchdown pass to Cody White. It was ruled – uh, by somebody down there to be stopped at the four-yard <laughs> line. And then I saw Kenny Pickett on a, a scramble keeper up the middle. I thought that might have been 6-2, and that was ruled down at the one. In, in the unbiased opinion of an offensive player, were either one of those two plays touchdowns? Almost definitely. The one that Cody – I know I know my boy Cody was going to get in. And, you know, one thing about Kenny, Kenny a dog. So, in that situation – I know he's he going to either dive, or, but I, if I trust, you know, we at the three, four-yard line, whatever it was, and Kenny's scrambling, I'm going I'm, I'm to take my bet on Kenny. Calvin, overall, how do you see this passing game kind of amping up? I mean, with Kenny getting all the reps now and you guys out there, uh, you know, with the ones and so forth, how, how, do, you, how do you perceive he's progressing? Um, I think he's progressing nice. I think we're all just coming together. Um, I just feel like, We've had so many just these three pass practices. We have so many more explosive plays down the field. And, you know, I think it's just, you know, a good, 
you know, cadence to what's going to be coming um, here in the future, you know, um, g getting the ball down the field, trying to get those big plays. And, you know, you can definitely tell that the, the chemistry is constantly developing. And it, I think we're, you know, we're almost there. We have plenty of work to do, but, you know, we can definitely feel that, you know, those chunk plays are, are being made. Calvin, last thing I have for you, uh, based on what you went through last year, is, is anybody enjoying this more? Is anybody down there having more fun than you? Oh, uh, you know, it's, we're all having fun, you know. But, man, I'm just like, I say it all the time, but I'm just like, God bless me with health, and I'm just like super happy, excited to be out here. Like, I haven't played actually football in, what, like two years, a year and a half, whatever it is. But I'm just like so thankful to be out here and like, you know, Lord willing, I cannot wait to, you know, it to be my first time to step on the field and put on that um, black and gold. Well, that's all I got for you, young man, because you are definitely, if we're even, you're leaving, aren't you? You're just yes, one sir. of those you guys. Know <laughs> you know it. I'm leaving. <laughs> Calvin, thanks so much for the time. Uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Thank you. I appreciate Thank you. Thank you. Wide receiver Calvin Austin III, he is showing up, you know. He is showing up. The go routes, his ability to get off the press. You know, he's talking about playing XYZ, all the different – uh, lineup formations to be able to go through and know your, your your schematics of what you're supposed to do, where you're supposed to be, and be there on time. And so we're seeing the expanding repertoire of what this young man is bringing to the game. And again, if you if you're one of those, if we're even, we're leaving. I'm leaving, guys. Which he is. That's exciting because everything that he does vertically brings bigger windows for guys underneath. And that's just something that, uh, you know, is it the old axiom, you can't coach speed. You know, the multi-position thing is intriguing to me as well, Wolf. I, I kind of perceived Calvin Austin III initially to be the presumptive slot receiver. And now all of a sudden, Allen Robinson shows up, and he's playing like a guy who presumes he's going to be the slot receiver. Right. Uh, they got some competition at that position. They got some great competition, but also great teaching mentors available for young guys like this. You know, one we were just talking to, Calvin Austin, is he, you can tell just by his attitude, he wants to be molded. He's hungry to be that guy. He wants to learn from the older guys, and he's very excited about participating in camp this year. And I, I, I think that just all speaks to his determination, his desire to get better and to be the very best that he can be. And certainly you have the mentors in place around him to help him achieve that. Another uh, development from today's practice, and by the way, I'm giving the first team offense a touchdown. Oh, One of those two plays. That's fine. It's not up to me. It's not my call, but that's my call. There you go. Uh, Mika Fitzpatrick back on campus yesterday, returning from uh, what Mike Tomlin has characterized as an excused absence for personal reasons. Wolf, we saw Mika Fitzpatrick on the field today in 11-on-11 for the first time. He was in the two-minute drill, uh, the defensive side of things at safety. Uh, we saw him in 7-on-7, seven seven and we saw him in team run. Uh, first, first reps, uh, a significant step, no? Oh, absolutely. Getting back, getting surrounded by your guys, being part of the mix, moving forward, getting those reps in, and, of course, the biggest thing is being able to get on the field and get those eyes where they need to be because one of the biggest assets that Maker brings overall is his ability to have vision from the back end and be able to line things up, communicate, and keep everybody in position and then doing what those magic Minka moments are. Uh, among the players not participating today for a variety of reasons, uh, Allen Robinson, uh, the aforementioned receiver who's excelled uh, pretty well so far, uh, in the slot, Isaac Samala along the offensive line, no T.J. Watt, no Patrick Peterson, no Cam Hayward, no uh, Nick Herbig on defense. But, uh, Wolf, speaking of that offensive line, uh, some developments percolate in there as well, including Kendrick Green, uh, the former offensive lineman who now for the third day in a row has gotten some reps at either H-back or even today we saw him as in-line tight end. Exactly so, on the back side. Away from the play, coming down, getting some doubles, moving up to the second level. We've seen the ability of this young man to be able to catch the ball in a, on a hide route out into the flat. We've seen the fact that he can blow people up in, in motion and on a trap block. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited by what he can do. You know, when you think about what Patrick Ricard, and he, yes, we're talking about a Raven, but Patrick Ricard, a 300-pounder, he goes out there and a cheese whopper of a dude puts a, a good whack on guys. This is what Kendrick can do, and we've seen it. I mean, a couple of those hits there, you're looking for, 
you know, is there a survivor <laughs> down there, you know, when it happens? Because he's really put a lick on him. But also catch the ball. And then we saw him warm up, of course, as we did before with the tight ends and the running backs. He gets on that Swiss ball and he lays on it. And that thing almost gets squashified, right? That's because he's a big big ombre but the fact of the matter is we saw him today for the first line or at least I, that I was aware first time line up as an end of the line tight end and you know when you do this uh, your uh, our colleague Max Starks made this point on uh, the training camp live show before practice if you try this once okay it's a gimmick maybe you're just throwing something at the wall when you try it a second day and now a third day in a row it's starting to suggest that uh, there's a purpose behind it there's no question, and in my mind, when you see him do the ball secure drills with the tight ends, with the running backs, that tells you this isn't just a gimmick, all right? You're learning ball security and going through a drill that establishes in the mindset and the physicality of the players before practice, all right? Secure that ball, make sure you're covering the points, get it tucked in, all these things. You don't do that for just a gimmick. Some other uh, O-line developments we saw again today uh, at left tackle, number one pick Broderick Jones, and at right tackle, incumbent left tackle Dan Moore Jr. Not the first time we've seen that, but we saw it again today. And Wolf, uh, Spencer Anderson, maybe the uh, relative afterthought in the draft class because he plays right. offensive line and he was picked down the line. But uh, left tackle, right guard, and left guard today. Uh, he is playing a, a multitude of positions, which uh, bodes well for him, does it not? Absolutely. I mean, you think about a right tackle, right guard, left tackle. I'm sure he's probably going to get some uh, at a left at a left guard. Who knows? He might even get some at center. This is a this is a very talented young man who shows knowledge and wisdom in playing the tackle positions. He doesn't look out of place when he's out there with all the guys. Nobody's nobody's giving him a Henway call, you know. And you know what a Henway is about I, two pounds. Yes. <laughs> That's, which is always but goggles the rookies that was always my favorite but the fact is he's very much in the mix and when does that good. come up when oh when you're out there and normally when you're walk through or something like uh -huh. that you know you get a real serious rookie you got to find one right so then you're you're pumping up and you get up there and you lined up and you go Henway Henway and the guy kind of looks and goes what, what's a Henway you go about two pounds it just it's it's a great icebreaker you know a lot of fun. Sounds like it. Uh, we've had a lot of fun doing this, and we're going to do it again on Tuesday, tomorrow, a day off for the Steelers here at St. Vincent College. They'll be back on these fields on Tuesday, and uh, we'll be uh, right back at it with uh, Training Camp Live before practice and with the wrap-up show after practice. Until then, for Craig Wolfley, I'm Mike Pursuta. This has been the wrap-up show presented by the UPMC Health Plan. Good afternoon, everyone.